Hi everyone, welcome to episode 14 of Behind the Brush. My name is Joy Baker with All About Art Gallery and today I'm joined here in the shop with Mildred, aka Millie Jarrett. Hi Millie. Hi, good to be here. Well thank you for coming, we really appreciate you being here. Um, so Millie has been a longtime resident here at the gallery. We've been representing her for several years and she has been painting a really, really long time. How long have you been painting, Millie? Well, let's see. I started when I was 16. Mm -hmm. So I've been painting numerous years. I would say uh, about 70 some odd. That's a long time, a lot of experience. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> As always. Um, so you're a native Nashvilleian, right? You grew yes. up here in Tennessee, mm -hmm. and you still live here in Nashville? Yes. Nice. Um, well, Millie paints mostly in abstract. Um, you do a little bit of, I guess, realistic kind of stuff as well, like mm -hmm. um, still life and things like that, too. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about, like, your, your background. Tell me about what led you to become an artist. Oh, that's not something I decided. <laughs> that, that, that's a, I think it's kind of an inborn thing. I, mm -hmm. um, I started uh, when I was 14 years old. I have a, I have a photo of this. Mm -hmm. uh, on the desk was a one stem rose, mm -hmm. one little vase. And my daddy was sitting there, and I was standing there. And I was so proud of that rose. I just loved I painted a rose. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes later, uh, Swift and Company, my father was with Swift, Swift and Company, they had a poster, safety poster contest. And uh, I won the thing. Ah. And so and I was 15 years old. And so I really have always wanted to draw and paint. It, it hasn't been easy. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of ups and downs, and, but it's been a good career. Yeah, well nice. What would you say, um, would be your biggest influences? Have there been like other artists or instructors that you might have had throughout your time? Oh, influences yeah. Influences on your career? Ma many, many. Uh, in Chattanooga, I had uh, George Cress and uh, Tib Shoemaker and uh, the beginning I had uh, one Eddie Green Williams mm -hmm. and Watkins. Mm -hmm. I remember well, she said, you never use black. <laughs> I, that still rings in my head mm -hmm. because you use um, Elizabeth Crimson mm -hmm. and Thalo Green or Thalo Blue and Burnt Umber, but you don't use black. To create what looks like black, uh -huh, I guess. Uh -huh. And it still has life, you yes. know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I enjoyed more than any was Anton Wise. Mm -hmm. He was a great painter. Where did you study with him? Well, at Watkins, at, uh, University of Tennessee, and just where he went, that's where I went. Yeah? Yeah. So you have a lot of history just with education in your artistic background. You've studied with a lot of different people. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then I traveled a lot. Mm -hmm. I, left, I left painting for a while, mm -hmm. and I was involved with another business, and I just uh, was all over the world, and that experience shows up, you know, mm -hmm. in your work. Yeah, I would say that travel would really bring something um, unique and unusual to your art because you traveling, you must have experienced different art from all over oh, and yeah. it must have had an impact on, you know, what you chose to do for your paintings. Well, a lot of it, it made you appreciate when you got home <laughs> <laughs> for a nice gallery with paintings that are local. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like, I remember India and I went to this museum, uh, art museum, and it was open. I mean... You know, there was no air conditioning, oh. nothing. It's just open for the public, hanging on stucco walls. I was amazed, but wow. so we're very fortunate to have this type of work in this type of country. Yeah. So do you mostly paint, um, at your, is your studio at home? Oh, Is that yeah. where your art studio is? Yeah, yeah. Nice. So what would be, you say, a typical day in your studio? Oh my goodness, that's how long is a short string. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are days that I just, I can't leave it. It's mm -hmm. just clicking. Mm -hmm. And there are days that I work a little while and I, I quit. <laughs> it's not there. Mm -hmm. It's not, abstract work is not something you do. Mm -hmm. It is something you feel. Mm -hmm. And when it's there, it's there. It's working. And when it's not, you just, you don't, you just don't paint that day. Do you feel like your abstract paintings are kind of like you taking an experience or a feeling or like a vision and putting it onto your canvas? No, 
I think abstract work, real abstract work, mm -hmm. uh, it's not something that you dream up or just copy it or um, uh, it's emotion. Mm -hmm. It's all emotion. It's what comes from here mm -hmm. that makes the difference. And that that's a hard career. Mm -hmm. well, I can say so. Yeah, because there are so many stages in your life, you know, that mm -hmm. are detrimental, uh, they're hard to get over, they're wonderful to explain, mm -hmm. and so that's just life. Mm -hmm. And that's what abstract is. It's more that than anything else, I think. How do you approach an abstract painting when you're getting ready to create one? Like, what is your beginning process? Mm -hmm. Oh, good question. Does a title ever come first, or no. is it usually the art in the title? No, no, no. The best thing you can do with an abstract painting, in my experience, is just to keep the mind out of it. Mm -hmm. You don't approach it and say, oh, I think here I'm going to put this, and I'm going to put that, and I'm going to put this. I need to put a little of that up there. No. No, abstract work comes from here, and you just, you know, and it takes years, <laughs> 72 years, that you can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you want it to be dark, you want it to be lively, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, that will come from the way you feel that day. Mm -hmm. Because I'll go back to canvases and I'll say, what in the world? Where was I that day? <laughs> you know, I, can't, I don't know where I was that day. Dang, I like it. I wonder if I could do it again. No. Nope. <laughs> you never, never. They're one of a kind. Mm -hmm. You know, they can copy them. You can try to copy it yourself. Mm -hmm. That's very successful. I'd like to do this again. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. No well, way. I think especially with your work, because you put a lot of texture and, like, mm -hmm. liveliness into your paintings, it's so hard to replicate this. Um, mm -hmm. to, to take a scan and make a reproduction, you just don't get the same feeling no. that you get with looking at this and, you know, you're not supposed yeah. to touch the art, but if you, you touch the art, you can really feel a lot of texture. I mean, this one has so much unique stuff going on, and all of your pieces are like that, I feel mm -hmm. like. Um, well, they change. They change. You may start a painting, uh, you want something light and bright, and, mm -hmm. and it depends on how you're feeling that day. Mm -hmm. And first thing you know, that painting's totally changed. <laughs> and you say, where did that come from? Have That's you ever had experiences with, um, this is kind of off the wall, sorry, but have you ever had experiences with your, what's going on in your personal life affecting your art? Like if you are grieving something or All if you're particularly All happy about it? You want to see the, you want to see your life? Look at your work mm -hmm. all the time. That's why it can't be copied. Yeah, seems like it goes through seasons, I would say. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Or days, or weeks, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, interesting, when you go back and look at, uh, I've painted a lot in my life, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and we go back through the years, and you say, did I do that? <laughs> What was I thinking that day? <laughs> well, chances were I wasn't thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's why it was successful. That's why it was good. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Would you say, even after all these years, that painting an abstract is challenging or not challenging or oh, it, easy? What do you think? Uh, nothing's easy. Mm -hmm. uh, but the good ones come fast. I mean, when you're on your own, and when you're not, you might as well quit that day because it's, a, it, it's not there. <laughs> it's just not there. Have you ever completely repainted over a painting? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, almost daily. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I paint over a lot. Well, I can imagine, you know, just like what you said, if you look back at something mm -hmm. that you did a while ago and you're thinking, what was I thinking, mm -hmm. start over. Who yeah. cares? And you, you pull them out, and you go through the bin, and, and you pull it out, and you say, man, that was dark. Where was I? I know, I'll paint over that today. <laughs> and then you paint over it that day. And the next day, you get a call. Wanting what you painted over. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> and <Nice>. that's true. <laughs> it's true. What would you say throughout your career has been the most challenging experience or challenging painting you've ever done? Well, I remember one time when I was studying under Gus Baker. Mm -hmm. he, he was a great teacher. And, uh, uh, oh, I was probably in my 20s, maybe late 20s. Mm -hmm. 
and I was having a hard day, and I said, to, I quit. I'm not painting anymore. I can't do this, and I quit. And he kind of grinned, and he said, I'd just like to see you try. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's crazy. I quit. I'll quit if I want to. Well, no. I've quit a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> Almost weekly. <laughs> a lot of times. But you pick it back up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because so much, you know, there's a real difference in creating uh, emotion mm -hmm. and the way you feel and what's happening in the feedback from a painting. It's a lot different than painting a picture, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, but, but I used to say, if you want a picture, get a camera. <laughs> and so I said that to the Nashville, Tennessee, and they printed it. <laughs> I don't care. But that's true. That's true. I couldn't do this again. I don't know how I did it. You know, or any other that I do. So there's a, a lot of difference in creating a painting. And, uh, Versus making a picture. Making a picture. That's right. I respect them. I appreciate them. I like them. I enjoy them. Mm -hmm. But it's not me. Yeah. I would say, like, thinking of people who come into the gallery, a comment that we get often when mm -hmm. people are viewing abstract work is, I could do that. Yeah, right. And, <laughs> and every time I hear somebody say that, I get a milly voice in my head. And let I them hear, try. And I hear, let them let try. Them, just let them <laughs> try. Uh, there's a lot of difference in place and emotion on a canvas. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said when it's not clicking that day, see, here's your heart and here's your head. The head are all the principles. I mean, these are, you know, you don't do this, and you don't do that, and you put that there, and that comes forward. All your little things you learn in school. Mm -hmm. And then these are the emotions, and, you, and they have to be in sync. The head and the heart have to be in sync. Mm -hmm. And some days they are. And that's when you get a good painting. And some days, they're never going to be that way. Because I'm thinking, what could I do to make that any better? Well, get out of that. Get out of your head. Get out of your head. <laughs> get out of your head. That's why I often uh, laugh and say, uh, you don't have to know anything or be smart to do this work. <laughs> but yet, you've you got to know. you got to enjoy it, though. Yeah. I think that that's one thing that shines through with your paintings, is you can tell that you genuinely just love it. Oh, yeah. Um, each one is very yeah. different. There's never like, oh, somebody bought this one, so I'm going to buy, I'm going to paint another one that's almost <laughs> just like it, you know, to try to sell more. It's, I mean, just looking at what's around us here, it, you've got a, a cohesive color palette, but they're also wildly different. And they can't be copied either. Because mm -hmm. I can't even copy them. Yeah. And I do them. I say, man, I like that. I'm to do some more of that. Mm -hmm. No, no. <laughs> And then you try, and your head gets in the way. <laughs> your head gets in the way. <laughs> so um, what else are we talking about? Well, Millie, I think that's probably about it. <laughs> uh, Anything else that you'd like to add? Any um, feedback up over your career? Yeah, or? I was thinking about uh, uh, teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was 15 years old, I started at the Nashville Museum of Art mm -hmm. out on West End, right close to uh, Vanderbilt. Working there? No, I was going to class there. Oh, okay. And um, uh, we'd walk, take the easel, uh, walk across the street to Vanderbilt campus. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would paint something on the canvas. I mean, on the campus. I was 15 years old. And, <clears throat> and I remember this as well when 180 Green Williams would say, you never use black. That still rings in my mind forever. And then uh, a wonderful teacher was, of course, Anton, but it was Gus Baker. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to paint a still life. The background was yellow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, what are you going to do? I can't, how do you get that yellow out of there? Because the yellow kept popping up, popping back, popping back. It's background. Mm -hmm. You don't want to yell. And I said, when will I ever yell? And he said, sugar, he called him about sugar. <laughs> he said, sugar, to create art, really, you just haven't lived long enough. <laughs> That's what he said. I was probably 22, 23. He <laughs> said, you just haven't lived long enough. Well, I tell you what, I've lived. You've lived now. <laughs> I've lived now. <laughs> I'm 
traveled the world, had a wonderful career, uh, have a lot of uh, beautiful people in the art world. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel privileged to be here and to try to answer some of these questions. Well, you teach now too, right? Well, you offer I did. Mm -hmm. I, I, gave my, I gave my classes up. Oh, but I've given them up before. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but I said, I don't really need to do this anymore. We mm -hmm. want to travel. And <clears throat> and uh, I've got a show coming up at uh, Belmont in February. Nice. So I've got to get ready for that. Mm -hmm. And these will be 60 inch pieces, big. Big ones. Most, most nice. of them are big. So I'm excited about that. And so I'm delighted to be here. Well, you've got a lot to look forward to and a oh, lot yeah. to look back on, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> too much to look back on. <laughs> Never. <laughs> but it's been a joy, and I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Millie. I really appreciate you coming to talk with us today. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know, we are all about art gallery and custom framing. We're located in Hendersonville, Tennessee, and we represent more than 45 artists like Millie um, who live here locally or thereabouts in Middle Tennessee and create wonderful original pieces um, so you can stop by any time to see us. We're located at 260 West Main Street in Hendersonville. And again, my name is Joy. And thank you, Millie. Good to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Good to be here. And never let somebody else determine your future. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> or I won't. <laughs>